Now, as we kick off segment two, we always like to look at, again, those those mobility fuels and things that are, are important to not only the economy, but also on the gasoline front. And you can see here that in the past last week, we were at 14.4 million barrels a day here we're at 14.76. So still below that 15 million point, you can see that that trailing four week uh, average when you look at that four week component on the average basis, we're still very much right around where we were in 2022. And we don't see much change to that going forward. When you look at just where demand cycles are, gasoline is getting a bit worse. And you, we will get a little bit of a pickup in distillate and diesel when you look at trucking. But that's something that we want to look at going forward as gasoline continues to be a broader headwind. Now, distillate had a build of 950,000 barrels. You can still see it's well below the five-year average. It's above year on year, but it, it's still the issue remains pad one. Everywhere else, you know, pad three is down 5 million barrels a day against the five year. But that's something that we see closing a little bit of a gap when you look at the slowdown on exports. And we'll talk about why that is in segment three. And then when you look at pad one, we're 16.4 million below the five year. That's really where we see this driving. Uh, imports slow down. We had imports drop 41,000 barrels a day. We do see that changing a bit. There is a little bit more coming into pad one. So we will get a, a bump. But not too much past the five-year average, so not not really a, a huge shift. And when you look at that, uh, again, global uh, within the U.S. speaking, we're still very much at the lower end, and we're not getting the rate of change or the builds that we really need to into year end. But we've, we have seen that the New England is starting to buy a bit more. We should see a bit more coming into uh, the Northeast as we uh, progress through not only just August, but more really the delivery should show up in September. Then you look at crack spreads, you know, continuing to move higher. Uh, this is where we, we're, we're starting to get to the top here. You know, we don't see this continuing up at this point. Just because at these levels, you're going to see a big shift. You're going to see these imports, and that'll help to kind of tamp this down. It's not that we're saying we're going back to 30, but it's something where, you know, this is where if you're if you're long, lighten up a bit because you're kind of right at that top. And that's where we start to see some of these levels because this is just showing something that, you know, we don't think is going to carry through in the same way. Then on the other on the other front, we do have a bit of a shift when we look at some of the, uh, you know, the crude pricing. You know, for those that have been following us, we said that the range for Brent is that 82 to 87. Uh, so as it got below 83, that's something where you're, you're at a point that you should be a buyer. You know, we're not in a position where you're going to see that break in the near term. You know, we do see downward pressure, but it's not going to be this huge pressure shift. It's going to be more along the lines of, you know, getting to that average in August of about 80, 84, 85 and that's where we see it going forward. And then as we get into September, we do see some of that bleed downward, but not so much breaking the range, just sitting lower at the range because we did spend the first half of August closer to 86 to 87. You know, here we're saying that we're going to stay a bit closer as we get into September, 82, 83, maybe a touch to 83, 84. But again, just on the lower end of that trading range, just because demand is going to slow down but we do have that supply that remains limited. Yeah, pad one, you can see on the distillate side continuing to be at the low end. You know, we don't see that changing in the near term. Imports will increase a bit, which should push us a bit higher, but you can see just how low we are heading into uh, the winter months. Pad three uh, is, is fairly flat. We do see some uh, increases coming because we do see imports slowing. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, exports slowing, and that's going to, again, kind of, pick us up a bit, but not in a, in, not in a huge way, just, you know, more of in a seasonal uh, adjustment at this point, because, you know, when you look at Europe, Europe isn't importing to the same degree on a lot of levels. And that's something that we'll also talk about in the econ show. When you look at uh, distillate demand, it's below the five year. We've been saying it's going to kind of sit right around here. We do see a, a little bit of an increase, which normally happens seasonally. It'll still stay below the five year, but you're starting to see some of those increases coming forward. Now, so far, when you look at trucking, you know, trucking has slowed back down after that little spike, but we do see that picking back up a bit. You've had a little bit of an increase in tender rejections. We do have a bit more cargoes coming to shore, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, which it's not that it's not like it's going to send us to 50. 
it's just gonna you know we're at a low point and we will likely cycle back up you know and, and which is normal when you think about ordering that happens for the holiday season you have halloween you have christmas you have usually a bit of that pickup which normally uh, starts to come at this point. You've started to see a little bit of an increase in uh, in truck tra- in tra- in, uh, rail traffic. You know, car loads are down 0.6, but you're starting to get a little bit of a pickup in coal. You know, you've had grain and forest products pick up just a touch. Motor vehicle staying strong. Petroleum, petroleum products staying strong. Intermodal is still slow. It's better than it was, but again, you're still going to be at that, you know, essentially 4 to 5% below what was uh, last year. Here's where you see some of those cargos picking up as you go into the end of into the beginning of September. This is pretty normal when you look at those increases because you have that ordering that's coming up. You know, when you look at compare it to last year, it's a bit tough because you had a huge collapse. So it, it, when you zoom out a bit, this is getting a little bit closer to normal. It's still slow, but better than it was and closer to where it has been in previous years. As you start to get some of the supply chains, you know, normalizing just a bit, especially as we go into some of those demand periods. Now you look at temperature, uh, things cool off in uh, the New England area, uh, essentially from South Carolina across through Tennessee and then up into Michigan, you know, and then obviously into Maine, you get that little bubble. You have uh, temperatures a bit above normal in some of the other areas, but you can see that we don't have the heat dome that we had in the past. So things have normalized a bit. So realistically, just given where we use the most for cooling, you know, this Northeast has a lot of uh, natural gas uh, uh, consumption. So this is going to put a little bit of pressure on that natural gas side. So now when we uh, pivot to gasoline here, you can see gasoline uh, had a build of 1.47 million barrels. Uh, that five year is it's it's 13.6 million below the five year. But that's really driven by pads, pad one. Uh, two and three pad one is down 6.3 million below the five year pad two down 3.8 and pad three down 2.2 but we do see pad two pad three slowing down just a bit on the export side it'll still be a little bit higher but we'll talk about that in segment three pad one is just a matter of when do the imports show up imports showed up uh last week uh we had an increase of 307,000 barrels a day it's 169,000 above the five year. And that's it was all driven by really pad one, which had an increase of 318,000 barrels a day, getting to about 759,000 barrels per day. Now, we were expecting to get closer, as you as we were saying, to about 850. So again, 893, right around that level. It will come down a bit, but we do see some uh, a decent amount out there. Then prices went higher. The ARB closed a bit, so there will be a lull. There's a little bit more behind it than there's that lull, and we do expect to see some uh, some additional, because then we'll talk about Europe in the next segment. Europe had a lot of big, another big build in gasoline, and that's going to be a bigger overhang as we go forward. Now, when you look at that 29-year average in terms of storage, you can see that we typically have those the continuous draws into about September 10th, you know, middle of September, and here we had a little bit of a pivot higher on storage. And that's what we've been talking about. It, it's going to go sideways. We're not going to get a drop. It's going to stay elevated. And you'll see some of these other years, which typically continue to draw, so the comps get easier. So even though the, we're against the five-year average, we're 13.6 off, You know, as we progress, that's going to tighten. And instead of being 13.6 million below the five-year, you know, we'll be 9 million, and then we'll be 5 million. You know, and, and that's going to be the interesting thing, thing to watch as demand continues to be uh, a hindrance. You look at blending components. Blending components had a build of 1.19 million. Uh, that's only 8 million below the five-year. Finished motor gasoline had a build of 280,000. So you're seeing that all of the different components, a lot of these key kind of watch points are all showing builds. You know, some of the elevated amount just because we don't have that demand. Here's looking at blending components, you know, pivoting uh, that a little bit higher. But as we've been saying, it's going to hold flat. You know, a lot of the seasonal builds, a lot of that is going to slow down when you look at the seasonal numbers, where typically you have some of this flatlining. You typically have draws going into September. But for us, as we go sideways, it just makes the comps easier. And we're going to look much better against the five year as we progress through not just not only just through August, but also into September. Now we look at the demand cycles, as we've been saying, Asia Pacific, 
you know, really holding in right where we thought we were going to. Europe is still very low or where we were uh, back in uh, in 2021, 2020. So you get an idea of how slow things have gotten there. Uh, North America picked up a bit, but again, it's still kind of below where we were, where we thought we were going to be. But you can see that typically, seasonally speaking, we get a little bit of an increase, which again is a bit normal. You can see that you know realistically, we should get one more spike as we go into uh, into Labor Day, and then we do see things cl- uh, slowing down a bit. Uh, Gas Buddy saw demand rose 0.6 percent from the prior week and was 0.1 percent above the four-week average, and they modeled about 8.98. So again, very close to where the EIA saw us. Uh, when you look at pricing, you know, pricing has leveled off just a bit. You know, there, it's still rising, just the rate of change has slowed. The problem is for the inflation calculation, August is going to look like a fairly hot month because you continue to see those increases. We don't see it rolling over until we get into September. And a lot of that slowdown is going to be that pivot from summer grade back to winter grade because winter grade is cheaper to make than summer grade. So that's going to be an interesting piece to watch as we go through the remainder of, uh, of this year. Uh, I'm sorry, the remainder of the summer and into, uh, into the fall. When you look at demand, uh, demand is still very low. Uh, it's, it's, it's at the levels that we saw during 2022 and 2020. Uh, and then it, if you want to think of it going back 2014. So again, you're, you're, we're still well below that 10 year average. We're not really getting back to where we were. And this is something that we've been talking about incessantly. You know, it's, uh, this is proving us right. If you want to think of it like that. And in terms of where we thought demand was going to be, we've been saying demand is overstated. And all the data was showing you that the, that we were right, more right than wrong on the demand side, and that was a bigger headwind. Propane, propylene had a build of 1.66 million. Uh, that's 17 million over the five year. You can see it's the highest it's been going back to 2015, and we don't see that changing in the near term. Uh, jet fuel had a build of 450,000. <clears throat> excuse me, 450,000 barrels. That's up 0.5 versus. The five-year average, and as we were saying, 1.55, 1.65, you know, just above on the demand side. So we're still fairly tight, you know, not too much change at this in this regard. The 12-week ahead passenger departure schedule, you can see that things have slowed down just a bit. But again, slowed down because it normally slows down. When you look at going from summer into fall, typically you have a, a little bit of a slowdown. And I think this is a, a bit easier to see when you look at that evolution of, of, uh, of flights, but it's not like we're getting this huge drop. It's just, you're getting, you know, the normal kind of step down as we go from August into September, as delays continue to be a problem for those that have, uh, have the pain of flying TSA passengers, as we've been saying in 20, uh, for, uh, the U S it's going to track 2019. It's <laughs> tracking it perfectly where, when you look at uh, total flights in, uh, in Europe, you know, it's just splitting the difference between 2020, uh, 2022 and 2019, and we don't see that changing in the near term. And then when we look at uh, eating out uh, around the world, it, we're about 4 to 5% below normal, uh, and that's, that's starting to kind of branch out into other areas. And I think this is showing a bit more of that pain that we've been talking about, especially in regards to consumer uh, spending and how consumer spending is changing and this is going to be one of those big areas where we don't see it getting back to those normal periods as economic pressure continues to rise. So that's what we have for you on this segment. In the next segment, we're going to go deeper into what's happening abroad, what, where are shifts coming in terms of refined product flows, oil flows, and how that is adjusting going forward. 